where you are, Lord, say a prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you. thank you for your faithfulness. Many times, my God, we'll read about your faithfulness. We'll hear about it. The Lord, you prove it. Yes, Lord. Yes. We just say thank you for it from the thank depths you. of our hearts. Yes. We pray, dear God, you bless your word tonight. We pray, dear God, that the Holy Spirit would anoint yes. that we may receive a relevant portion of it yes. for where we are right now. Uh -huh. Have your divine way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Judges 16, we're going to read verse 26. For you, Lord, I would like to say thank you to the saints for their support for the pastor's passing. It made a great deal, all the calls and support coming by and helping out. All of it was absolutely amazing. I believe you guys are the greatest congregation in the world. He felt all the love, felt all the support, and we appreciate that greatly. I know it was a difficult time, and it's a difficult, difficult time even us. I was telling someone in the book of Job that it speaks about he lost his house, and then it says, while he yet, while they were yet speaking, he lost his children, he lost this. And I was saying, it's the prayers of the saints. They said, how your family, how you doing? I said, the prayers of the saints. I said, can you imagine you getting to wake up one morning, and you get a call, your best friend died. An hour later, your father died. An hour later, your pastor that you had your whole life die. An hour later, your business partner died. An hour later, your life coach died. In the same day, you get all of those calls in one moment. Nothing but the grace of God. Nothing but the grace of God. We appreciate the saints and their prayers. Amazing, amazing. And we'll speak more to that uh, later as well. Judges 16. Verse 26. And Samson, and Samson said unto the lad that led him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all of the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. So just a little context, Samson had got too close to a female. We want to watch it get too close to females. The Bible said, can a man handle fire in his bosom and not be burned? Many individuals have toyed with some man and their job brings him some flowers, taking him I, I, I'll buy you some food. I'll do that. I can handle it. No, no, no. We don't want to. I can handle it. Right. We want to be careful, amen. amen. We don't even want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, David. Amen. Yes, so here, Samson messed up. He got too close to someone he shouldn't have. Ended up losing out. But thank God for hope, amen. amen. It said his hair began to grow again. Yes. So here we have Samson, although he messed up. That's why we don't give up on nobody. It doesn't matter, my God, what they've been through in their past. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind. Amen. Amen. We move forward. So here he messed up in his past. Here began to grow. And now he's with the lad. And he's asking the lad, lead me to the pillars one more time. Yeah. Well, here a party break out. Don't you know the devil threw a party when, it, when the saint of God backslide? Yeah. Devil, a, a, a party breaks out. All those spirits, they celebrating all those tracks you handed out, all the people that you convicted and said, oh, we got him, we got him. They celebrated. So here they were celebrating. But oh, watch out. Thank God for mercy, amen. The Bible says that he delights in mercy, amen. Come on and read. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me. I pray thee, and strengthen me. I pray thee, only this once. O oh God, that I may 
be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Give me one more chance, Lord. Come on, read. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood. My Lord. And on which it was borne up. Of one with his right hand and my the other word with in the his spirit. Right. My God, the two pillars of the house stood, the word in the spirit. Come on and read. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. The night that the pastor was really low, we came down and spent the night at the church. And God tremendously strengthened us. And then after he passed away, a spirit of sorrow came so hard. It was, it was a spirit of sorrow, a spirit of despair, a spirit of almost, why God? And I've seen some people lose their parents and if they don't tap into grace, they get bitter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and they'll say, why God? How did you let this happen to my, my parent? Why God? I don't, I don't understand this. Why did the saints pray? All these things come in their mind. Why? Is divine healing ready? Why God? Why did you? And some are struggling with things today. But God gave me something. And afterwards, and it was so profound and so inspiring because we knew the bird that the pastor had. And the thought he gave us was along the lines of, he, I couldn't have asked him to give me any more. 68 years? <laughs> All through every week of his life. 68 years grinding. Praying fat, 68 years. He didn't have a time in which he grew up church of God. He was saved 15 years before he really got. He came in as a grown man. The apostasy was in full. Just a few years later, he was minister in charge of a congregation. Had never preached a sermon in his life. Just came in, just didn't have to deal with ministers that were seasoned, but they had begun to shift. He had to deal with 60. It was he never experienced a time of just joy, just, just peace, where it was just great service. And oh, just one, oh, this. From the top, then he break away, barely to escape that. As soon as he established in the truth, then the individuals that helped him establish, they came with some foolishness. So he had to glean that. As soon as he found this other place in which they could preach the full truth, then they came up with some other foolishness. So he's like, man, I did this in one battle after another. He said one time, he said, I, I, I believe God understands that if he gives me any area of peace, any area of relaxation, then I'm just going to go off. So he just keeps me up under so I sat there, and I'm like, Lord, you're taking this warrior from us when we need him most. And he said, the, bat, the burden that he carried and the influence that he yielded, I'm going to do more with his death than I would have if I kept him here. Amen. Let me clear this up. I'm not saying he's going to do more with his death than he did with his life. You understand that? Yeah. I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm saying if I left him here a few more years, yeah. and he was, he had gave it all. Yes, sir. He, was, he, had, like, he had much stuff to give. Yeah. He was basically just trying to warn you getting ready. I ain't got much. I can't carry you no more. I can't stay up with you all night no more. You need to have something in yourself so you can stay up. I can't just preach you every time to the spirits out you in the altar, my God. I should be able to teach you a little here and there. And you see your own mirror, own needs, and you measure yourself. God said so clearly to me, he said, I'm going to do more with his passing than I would have if I'd have left him here. Begin to get one call after another. One call after another. About under conviction because Brother Hampton was sick. Under conviction because Brother Hampton passed away. At the funeral, at the gravesite, weeping and crying. Uh, he, I'm, I, I'm not in the book four. I'm going to be there every Sunday now. I, I, I'm going to start doing this. One after another, saint dealing with some things, came to church. I need to clear up some stuff. There's some things I've been involved with that was gray area. But I'm done with it. I'm done with it. My pastor is gone now. I, I, who gonna step? I, I, I'm done with it. 
I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm dealing with some stuff I shouldn't be doing. I got some issues with people. This thing, I'm done with it. I'm just letting that go. I ain't got time. I can't deal with that right now. I got I, I, I to step up. I got to come up higher now. I'm not praying like I should. I got to turn. I got who going to do it now. Begin to already see the fruit, the fruit of his labor. I don't know how many crowns he's going to get. One day he was teaching about eternity. He said, there's a difference between paradise and heaven. I'm sitting there just like, you know, he's going deep sometimes. I'm sitting there like, hold on. What you, what, you, what are you coming up with? What, what, what he was breaking down how when you pass away, you go to paradise. If you actually die right, you in the Abraham bosom, so on and so forth. But heaven, he, he said, your rewards are continually being accumulated. Continually being accumulated, all the things you might have handed out of the track, you might have preached the gospel. This person got saved, but they ended up becoming your rewards continually accumulated, and then the final judgment is that's why I said that death and hell gave up what was there was in them, so on and so forth. The saints were in the grave, right? Here. Why are they coming to the final judgment? Because they got some more rewards that's coming. And I thought about that and I said, This brother rewards the inspiration. Can you imagine living so powerfully that after you've gone, the inspiration from your life keep yielding results? People keep getting saved. People keep taking stand. Contacting with people that's not seeing clearly the gospel, call on the phone. They say, brother, I can't argue with the evidence. I can't argue with the evidence. My, well, I don't want to be too personal. We don't even, divine, we don't know nothing about that. Not like, I got a condition, I'm praying on it, nothing happened, so now I'm going. No, no, no. It's not even a, a it's not even a rally to, to extend you. It, it just it, I never knew you talking about he raised y'all without a nickel worth of medicine. What happened when y'all got well, fevers 105? What happened when y'all had broken bone? My leg was sticking out like this. What happened? I called for prayer. What happened with this when, when your mother had broke out all over her arms and all over this eczema and all this stuff? What, how, how did that dry up? How did that happen? Prayer. Prayer. That's all, that's all we knew. What happened when all these things happened? I'm on the phone sitting there and I'm like, this is somebody I wanted just to go up down and talk to to see if they would take a stand. But here they are calling after he's gone. The message title for tonight and we won't endeavor to hold you long is called lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes Isaiah 54 Isaiah 54 lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes God is coming back for a glorious church his church was not founded upon a man but the man amen the principles that were put in us we will go forward Isaiah 54 Verse number one, strength, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Sing, O barren. All right. Thou that didst, didst not bear. Now this is after Israel, or should I say the Hebrews, have come out of Babylon's captivity. Chapter 54, I mean chapter 50, uh, uh, four, three it was, I'm sorry. But verse 11 through about verse 18, it talked about the city being uh, emerging from the ruins. But now they came out of Babylon. The city is emerging from the ruins. Now he's saying we got work to do. Come on and read. Sing, O barren. Yes. Thou that didst not bear. Come on. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. Yes. Thou that didst not travail with child. Come on. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. Come on and read. Sing the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Come on. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Mm -hmm. Spare not. He's Lift speaking now cords. of the Gentiles coming into the faith later on through Christ. The Gentiles will be more. He said, enlarge the place of thy tent. Come on. Spare not. Yes. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Yes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. Come on. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. So I'm about to do something great with you. I'm about to do something more with you, but you can't remain like you are. You can't remain in the place that you are. I'm about to expand you. I'm about to do more for you. I'm about to do a work. I'm about to do a, a, a work in this end time, but you can't remain where you're at. The Bible said that he will not put more on us than we're able to bear. In other words, God's saying, are you prepared for what I'm about to do for you? The, the way I'm endeavoring to use God's church, he said, I'm, not, I'm coming back for a church that is glorious. 
without spot or wrinkle. It said the glory of the latter house. I'm pouring into you. I'm getting you deep, my God. Why? Because I have a work for you to do. But you can't stay where you're at. Your prayer life can't stay where it's at. Your fast life can't stay where it's at. You gotta limp in that course. That course, my God, is that if you had the same course and you made a bigger tent, then the tent will blow over when the storms come. When the winds come, you have to have longer cords. He said, what I'm about to do with you, lengthen that cords. That cord which holding the stakes. I'm going to get to the stakes in a moment. That cords, my God, that hold to the stakes. When the stakes hold into the ground, that prayer life, you got to lengthen that. you got to pray more. Why? Because the pastor who just gave his life, sitting between the porch and the altar, praying for this, praying for this, praying for this, is not here. But I'm endeavoring to do a work. I'm not endeavoring for y'all to die. I'm not endeavoring for y'all just to blow away. I'm not endeavoring for it to get fewer and fewer. I want my God. I to be greater. I'm going to bring in a harvest. I want to heal more bodies. I want to bless more people. I want souls coming in from the prison. I want souls coming from the college. I want backsliders coming back. I want saints' children coming back. The pastor gave his life making sure that we had the foundation, my God, but we can't remain where he's at. Why? Because it's going to be a greater load to be born. It's going to be a greater load that needs to be. Sister Green is gone. Sister Robinson is gone. Sister Doris is gone. Brother Hanson is gone. I can't do the work I want to do unless you Strengthen your cord. He said this kind cometh not but by prayer and fasting. You can't handle this. Why? Because your cords aren't long enough. They said, Jesus, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we cast that demon out? Why couldn't we heal that case? He said, your cords are not long enough. you got to pray more than you've been praying. you got to consecrate more than you've been consecrating. Time out for going to Walmart just to be going to Walmart. My God, make sure that you stay before God long enough to get something for you and something for the overflow. The church needs an overflow. Don't just come to church and talk about, oh, what the, oh okay, what service is going to be like tonight? Is it going to be dry? Is it going to be encouraging? No, give me for God to come to church with an overflow. They can say, my cup on it over, my God. The Mississippi River, the land around the Mississippi is awesome. It's worth millions of dollars. Why? Because the Mississippi every now and then would overflow and it makes the land around it real rich. You should be so strong in God that folk around you is rich. Folk around you, the services that you go to are rich, my God. The prayer meetings that you go to are rich, my God. The individual saints that you exhort are rich, my God. Why? Because you deal with the overflow. So here he said, I got to work, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to leave y'all there. I'm not going to leave y'all out there. He said, but are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? That old casual devotion, that ain't working now. That old casual devotion when you really couldn't say what you really read, you kind of read some, but no, if somebody asked you by like, noon, what did you read today? You go, well, I don't know, I didn't read. I, no, get something in you. Get something in you. Get an old tape out, my God. Find the old tape, my God. Take Don't just listen to it, but take notes from it. Lengthen thy cords, my God. Quit being so busy. We're too busy. All this technology. Set the technology off. Don't spend more time on Facebook than you spend it in the Word of God or YouTube or anything else you got your, uh, uh, involved in, my God. Make sure that you're lengthening thy cords, my God. Your children want to come in, my God. Saints, backsliders want to come back. But I need you to lengthen your cords. There's going to be some cases that used to have one or two people jump on them. One individual tried to discourage, I don't know if he was trying to discourage or reality, but Hampton got some big shoes. Can't nobody feel them. Them size 32, you know what? You're right. He's size 32, you're right. But if I wear a size 8, and Sister Mary wear a size 8, and Sister Selena wear a size 8, come on now, Brother Print wear a size 8, Amen. We can get the job done. Amen, devil. You ain't going to discourage us, my God. Amen. Amen. So here he said, my God, you got to lengthen your cords. Take conscious time out and say, Lord, what does this mean for me? How can I be in position? How can I be in better position? Normal, what's been normal, won't do today. Amen. What I've done up until this point. Maybe you said, Brother Lee, when I'm already fasting, this was, well, be more focused in your fast. Maybe you don't add a longer time, but you said, I'm going to exact my labors more. Because sometimes I'm not really fasting, I'm just doing without food. You know what I'm saying? I got to really get before God, making sure that when I am fat, I want to, Lord, show me practically how can I lengthen my cord that I can, my God, be more in this in time. He said, lengthen thy cords the cords was the rope connecting the tent to the stakes 
longer cords needed to hold larger tents in place. Greater consecration increases greater ability to bear burdens. If your cords are not lengthened, it will be the same old, same old. Lengthen cords holds and make the tent stronger, producing a more stronger, a stronger, more mature experience. When your cords are lengthened and you're stronger, things that bothered, bothered you yesterday no longer bother you today. Petty situations. She didn't speak to me. They didn't let me cook what I wanted to cook. They didn't let me sing what I wanted to see. Well, I, I, I was the usher today, but I could. When the cords are lengthened, pettiness, things that you used to get caught up in, now you just get up in the God. There's just a season that's small things don't bother you. It says, The stakes go over to Isaiah 33, verse 20. Let's go back to it. The stakes were the instrument that's driven in the ground that fastens the cord to the tent. It holds everything in place, the stakes. Isaiah 33, 20. Come on and read. Look upon Zion. Yes, sir. The city of our solemnities. Uh huh. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem. Come on. A quiet habitation. My Lord. A tabernacle that shall not be taken down. My Lord. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. The stakes. Is that which held everything in place because it was a thing that was firmly in the ground. The stakes was the truth, the gospel tenets, the doctrine, understanding and possessing a deep personal conviction in the truth. Strengthen thy stakes. Say what I want to do for Zion. You personally, I'm not talking about what brother so and so said, getting your stakes stronger. Yourself. Getting before God. Not just reading, but studying God's word. Giving myself to understand. Going to another level. With the stakes down in me. Appreciate the saints going to camp meetings and fellowship meetings in times past. Somebody get up with some false doctrine. Those saints that got stakes deep. They got stakes that's deep in the ground. Can sense. Hold on. The Bible speaks about winds of doctrine. Folk coming up around here with different slants on stuff. Coming up around here with something that's scripturally unfounded. Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. Just in charity, give them the benefit of the doubt. You kind of listen. Let me make sure you sell it up. My stakes are deep. Don't come up here with nothing different. Don't come up here with nothing new. Don't come, don't try to come up here changing stuff. My stakes are deep. Don't come up here talking about this was yesterday. The Bible said God's word is forever settled in heaven. Don't come with nothing new. My stakes are personal. Don't think because the pastor's gone, you're going to slip some up in. My stakes are personal. My stakes are deep. Don't, don't, if you waited for this opportunity, you will end up, my God, uh, 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 dealing with a difficult situation. Why? Because it wasn't found in the board of man. We had a pastor that wouldn't even let us sing a song without the stakes of that song going deep in us. He wasn't trying to us just to have a vain repetition. No, stop the song. Never yield a step. What's that mean, my God? No matter what you go through, you got to give you grace to go through it. You don't got to yield to nothing. Do you understand? He was making sure the stakes from the song was deep down in us. See, it's strengthening thy stakes. The word of God. Go over to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. 
He told Joshua the same thing. He said, if your stakes aren't deep, then you're not going to make it. Joshua chapter 1. Lengthening thy cords and strengthening thy stakes. Joshua chapter 1, chapter verse number 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, mm -hmm. the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Saints, many congregations have messed up because in times of transition, they didn't lengthen their cords and strengthen their stakes. They were thinking that they could get by on what they've been doing. Come to service, barely praying. Just kind of sitting there. You'll sing a song if you feel like singing it. If you don't feel like singing it, then you won't. You open the Bible when the word is going forth. You pay attention if you don't. And they're thinking that they're going to maintain the inspiration, the healings, salvation, all these things just by just showing up because they had somebody that was making up for their lacks. My God. They had somebody that was making up for their insufficiencies and their lack of consecration. Well, when there was a shift, it was a time of requiring more from all those that remain. You can maintain what you got and even add to it, but you're going to have to lengthen that cord. You've got to go further in prayer than you did before. In order for you to maintain what you have now, in order for you to maintain the atmosphere that you have now, you want a service that you can bring your children to that, my God, the Bible said that a sinner cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous. If you come up in Zion, you should be brought to the valley of decision. You might not get saved, my God, but the anointing of Zion should be of such that no sinner can come up in here and just be relaxed. Just chewing bubble gum. No, not in Zion you won't. Nobody from Babylon should be able to visit the church of God and just come up in here thinking they still say when they know they're committing sin. No, through the songs, the testimony, and the word of God, they should be brought to the valley of decision. They might not be saved, my God, but they're going to be shown the truth. So in order to maintain that, in order to keep it going, the strength, the length of the cords, it's going to have to be lengthened. You got to go longer. You got to go longer. I'm sorry, you got to go longer. Everybody from the front to the back, to the side over here, to the side over here, you got to go longer. You got to go deeper. He said, Joshua, I got you. Moses is gone. Y'all ain't got nothing to worry about. The promise was with Abraham. God used Moses, but the promise, amen, is, 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 is yay and amen. It's going to be fulfilled. Whoever is not in a person is in the promise itself. If I got to use somebody else to fulfill the promise, I'm going to use it. But your stakes better be deep. Go to verse number seven. Read, brother. Only be thou strong and very courageous. You will have to be courageous, my God. Why? Because you want to show your stakes when you had somebody else behind you while your stakes was deep. Now Moses ain't behind you no more. Your stakes going to be tested. Moses ain't there no more. So you have to have courage. Come on and read. Only be thou strong and very courageous yes. that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. The states, the law, that you observe all of it. Every bit of it, my God. Don't come up around here with no mini skirts on now. Don't do that. That foolishness, my God. Get that foolishness out of here. Don't come up around here showing all your cleavers off now. No. All the law. Don't turn from it to the left. Don't be no lefty. Don't come out here, my God. You talking about uh, 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 liberalism and this, that, and the other? You doing it? No, no. It don't take all this. We can do this. No, 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 no. That's foolishness, my God. He said, don't turn to the left. Don't come with no food. Don't come with nothing. Uh, 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 something that you used to do on your vacation. Now you don't have bonus to wear at the church. Don't come up in here with that. He said, if you want the glory, you want what I have for you. You want what I have for the church of God. You, now listen, you don't got to stay here. But if you're going to stay here, then don't go to the left. And don't go to the right. Don't mess up what God is doing. We're not talking about adding them new. We said, my God, the ancient landmarks that's already been established. 
and confirm with signs and wonders, my God. Don't go to the left. Don't come up in here, my God, put no rap music in the choir. Don't go to the left. Come on, we fall down, but we get up. No, we don't under him that's able to keep us from falling. Don't come up with nothing new. No, your stakes got to go deeper, so deep that you don't, my God, come up with nothing new, but also that you don't tolerate no foolishness. They said, but also don't go to the right. Don't come up with no old, old funny acting spirit. Holier than thou. You got greater discernment than everybody. Nobody in the church got no power but you. You, oh, uh, did you, 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 whoa, whoa. No, we shouldn't be wearing no brown around. What in the world does brown have to do with anything? We shouldn't eat no meat, my God. What are you coming up with? What? Jesus ain't meat, bruh. What in the world are you coming up with, man? Your stakes better be deep enough to nobody coming over to the right foolishness. I mean, you, 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 can, you don't know what people to come up with. The Bible talks about seducing spirits. They come over your house at night. Don't you know this is your stakes better be deep, deep enough that you can discern? That's discord. That's foolishness. That's right, bro. Don't take it to prayer. That's discord. I mean, my stakes are deep. I can smell that. That's discord what you're trying to do there. We try to move forward. Everybody's green. Everybody's strong. We all trying to make heaven. Don't come with that mess. We ain't trying to. No, no, no. We one team. We're going to go together. We're going to Zion. My stakes is deep enough, my God. Amen. The individual came another day was telling somebody, yeah, this happened and that, and they need me to pray. And I got to do it. One individual, I don't even know his spiritual condition, but he had enough stakes deep enough to discern. That's spiritual pride. You think that you the one, you, you, and you got to be, and you, I'm great, and I'm the, hold on. Hold on. Paul and them, they tried to exalt him. You know, man, I want you, Paul ripped his clothes up. So, man, what we be doing? Man, we just be brothers, bro. We just be waiting. Don't even come with me with all that. Don't come with that, Lord. No, no. Your stakes is deep enough in humility. Stakes deep enough in humility. We're not going to allow that right there. So here he told Joshua, he said, as long as your stakes remain deep. Yes. Come on and read, brother. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Don't turn to the right nor left. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now I'm going to be with you. Whithersoever thou goest. I have a work to be done. Get your head up. Moses was great. Don't mourn yourself. To respect and honor the legacy. Keep the work going. Lengthen thy cords. Personally. Lengthen thy cords. Say, Lord, if I was here, what do I need to do to get here? <coughs> what do I need to do to get here? Lord, if I was here, my weakest link, what is it? Is it fear? Am I afraid to testify? Am I afraid to trust God? You didn't give us the spirit of fear. Is it because I had a failure? And my mindset was, I had a failure. I backslid. I can never be used. Saints won't accept my testimony. Saints won't, whoa, whoa. Since when did you get a saint's pleasing spirit? We're pleasing God. The Bible said that the prodigal son, when he came back, he said he put a ring on his finger. He wasn't talking about jewelry. The ring was a signet ring, which represented authority. In other words, he was saying, you're not coming back as a stepson. You're not coming back sitting on the bench. The authority you had before, I'm giving that back. We're not talking about positions. We're talking about laboring for God. Amen, We're talking about doing the work for God. Amen. Lord, how can I strengthen, lengthen my cords? What does that look like? Am I too busy? What does that look like, God? Help me to understand. And how can I strengthen my stakes? Lord, help me to have this thing down in me. Young people, the time we're living in now, God want to use you. But you got to know this doctrine for yourself. You're going to have people pulling you aside in Walmart, telling you that this was Brother Hampton's vision, this was his thought. His, you better have enough inside you. Somebody told me today, somebody picked her up in a, in a car, took her for a ride, talking foolishness. You know what's amazing? I used to wonder, anything that takes place almost in Zion is for the 72-hour rule. Brother Hampton found out about it. It can be a conversation way over there in the closet. 
It's just, I, I don't know why he just, he just, I know about it. Y'all come, you know about that? I know about it. One individual, I was at his funeral, somebody, I was going to say, hey, Brad Hampton, they said, how did Brad Hampton feel about, what did he believe about? Brad Hampton believed you was exactly who you are. Good, if you're good. But if there's some shade, he, he, his confidence in you was exactly where it should have been. Good, if you're good. But oh, if it wasn't. Sometimes I'm sitting in my confidence with her, like, hold steady, hold steady. The, the, the stakes needs to go deeper. The stakes needs to go deeper. Our word of exhortation tonight is that God would help us. I believe with everything within me, saints, you can hold me accountable to this. That God wants to use this congregation in a mighty way. I don't believe the best days are behind us. I believe that God has something special. I don't believe it's going to be no respected person. Please don't come around here and talk about my daddy was this, my mom was this. I'm the, I've been here for 46 years. You only been here for 32. So I'm like, no, 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 no. Bible says that my God, he'll, uh, the humble, he'll exalt. I don't believe my God is going to this, that, and the other. David was the last of the last. But I do believe that if we lengthen our cords, lengthen our cords in a real way, saying, Lord, I'm online. Appreciate Sister Maria and the work that she's doing online. We're hearing from so many people. I mean, not just hundreds, saints, thousands contact me saying, can y'all come here? Can y'all come there? What about this? Can we come up next week? You're going to be saying, can this, that, and the other? What about this, that, and the other? In my mind, I'm up here spending time in prayer for a deeper level of discernment. Because I'm like, is this really hunger? Or are they thinking that it's an opportunity because they pass it on? It's almost too much. It's almost like, man, we, we ready to go. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. Now, on the flip side, I don't want to crush something that God may have used through this to kind of get them, stir them, and they hear, I, 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 hold on, I left. I, I don't be no novice. Come up here and there's something that's already been judged and dealt with. No, sir. No, sir. But also don't go to the right and crush something. And I hope the saints got enough discernment and benevolence and, and, and charity not to try to judge something. Critical spirit. Judging everything, this thing should be, whoa, 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 whoa. Within two weeks, it's different, it's different, right? It's different. It's different. You different. Goodness gracious. Two weeks later, just come up with anything, my God. It's just, oh, it just changed around here. You changed. Get before God in prayer, see God's face, and let's lift in our cords and strengthen our state. God bless us. Let's just have a, uh, a word of prayer for our dismissal. Let's kneel and pray, and that'll be our dismissal. Then we'll take uh, an offer.